Welcome back to the show of requirement. I'm pointing to the graphics that David put on the YouTube. The show of requirement, Harry Potter podcast. Exclusively, it's not exclusive, it's everywhere. Uh, it's on YouTube. If you're watching the video edition, it's on Apple Podcast, Amazon Now. Amazon's the newest one. Yeah, I don't know. Amazon heard that we're the number 12 Harry Potter podcast. Yeah, we, ha- we have to talk about that, about how amazing that is. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Um, also, yeah, my, mom has been, my mom has been binging our podcast recently and was so excited about us starting like a video component. Good. So, oh, that's she's hilarious. got so many thoughts. Happy she's birthday, like, Jennifer. It's the best way for me to write in. Happy like, birthday, so Jennifer. Many ways. She started it commenting is. on some things and I've been responding mm-hmm. on the Insta, but maybe we yeah. should have brought those into an owl post. I don't know. We could do that next time. But yeah, we could. Uh, she, she was listening to our scores episode, which made me mm-hmm. happy because no one listened to that episode. <laughs> <laughs> David and I really wanted to do it, but we're like, well, we don't have any of the music license. She used to so, teach music, yeah. then, so she's all about music. Like, we're just going to talk about it and hope that people understand what we're getting at. All the scores, mm-hmm. like the crazy Harry Potter score fanatics love probably love that episode. But mm-hmm. anyway, today we're talking about Hufflepuff. We did a Hogwarts Houses episode a hot, hot minute ago, David and I did. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to do oh, more, 20. but we really weren't sure how to explore that. And so we came up with this idea to do like a little series this season every once in a while where we're doing the show of requirement House Cup. And it was one of those science fair project scenarios where we were preparing it and then we were like, yeah, let's get on the schedule. And then uh, time went by and then today came up and Abby and I went, oh, we're first. We haven't even decided what we're doing for this series. <laughs> <laughs> we had and no so, conversation. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. So we did some uh, quick texting and pulling stuff together and we've got a very, uh, very structure in a sarcastic tone, listening people, this is a very serious, quote unquote, competition where we're just throwing up a bunch of stuff about our houses for an episode. And in this case, David's going to be the judge or Professor David, as we're calling mm. him. Yes. And David will be giving very seriously giving points that do definitely matter as we go and so that's david's that is david's so role told. so he's been told and so abby and i have thrown together some stuff i've got some great stuff from the grand old interwebs and we're just gonna go we're gonna fly yep. yeah let's go i have no idea what's about to happen so it's gonna be fun uh but it's also gonna be serious and it's gonna be funny very serious because uh, because i have Literally, I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, so I'm ready. Here we go. <laughs> We're trying to set a standard, but also who knows? I think <laughs> Hufflepuffs are not known for being good students necessarily. <laughs> so uh, I think it's all in good jest that we're preparing all oh, this yeah. at the last second. <laughs> and I think the way we approach this will probably be uh, somewhat of that as well. So we'll start. Well, would you would you like to start us, Abby? Yeah, With the foundations I can start and the house values. Yeah, I'm trying to get to where I can see both our screen and. Mm, that's what I did. I was really sly yeah. about it. I was like, Yeah, I've, I've got to right. know. So we're starting off. Is David able to see this, or is he just going blind? He can see it now. I can see it. Okay, so we're starting off with foundations of the Hufflepuff house. Yes, so let's go. I think it's important to get some backstory. So Helga Hufflepuff was the founder of the Hufflepuff house. Um, she was a Welsh witch and was one of the four founders of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Um, while the other founders chose to have special students, she accepted them all without preference, although she did want them to be loyal and hardworking. Mm. Although some of them aren't necessarily that way in school Mm. Mm. um helga's portrait remained at hogwarts by at least the 1980s i don't know where that that was from fandom.com i don't know where the portrait part comes from 
I'm guessing it's from Hogwarts cool. Mystery. Yeah, well, hmm. and also like because um... we don't have any canon stuff from the eighties. Yeah. So, um, House of Values that Helga Hufflepuff really tried to instill for Hufflepuffs. You know, they're loyal, hardworking, dedicated, patient, fair, just, and true. Um, their colors represent wheat and dirt. Kind of gives a sense of humility. Oh <gasps> Connects earth with the tones. earth. <laughs> it is. It's earth tones. Connects with the earth. <laughs> Okay. And then also, again... David, do you know what I'm referencing? Uh, do you remember the rainbow sponge? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh my gosh! Hud and I used to watch that video, play that video all the time in our wow. apartment. It's a it's an infomercial that is very cursed. Oh it's gosh. so funny, though. Link it in the watch, doobly-doo below. Link it in the yeah, doobly-doo. Link it in the doobly-doo. Yeah, yeah, I got okay. it. I'll do it. Rainbow yeah, sponge. Send it to me and I'll do it. But there's a part yeah, of it where she's doing painting with it and she goes, <gasps> Earth Tones. That's what I just thought of. Sorry, please right. continue. Yeah, keep going. Um, again, Hufflepuff was meant to be a place for acceptance, a place of belonging. And unlike some of her other founders, she wanted a sense of equality for students. Um, wanted them to belong. So I guess we should talk about the, the badger in the room. The mm, large nice. badger in this room. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. Five points People Hufflepuff. say Hufflepuffs. Thank you. Mm, yeah, very go. important. I'm definitely writing that down. Yeah, please write those down. <laughs> so I'm not going to be able to keep up. <laughs> so people complain. Some people complain about Hufflepuff. They think they're like, I guess they think well, we, because Abby and I are Hufflepuffs. I guess I didn't mention that. I felt mm. like that was a given. That, but yeah. If, hold on. Wait. Pause. <laughs> if you don't know that, Welcome to the podcast so glad to have you it's first time you've seen this but we've talked about this in the past he had me so in the first if half you've not been gonna here, if you've been here and you don't know that you obviously don't pay attention no so whichever house you're a part of minus 20 points <laughs> Ooh. yeah hard definitely writing that down so please also please, yeah please did we introduce ourselves in. at the beginning? yeah yeah, we did. Okay. Sure, we did. Yeah, we've done it. Our names are yeah. on the YouTube too. Everyone knows who we are. This is Every, yeah, this yeah. Abby, David. It, our names are on like right here. <laughs> our names are right here. But yeah, yeah. So if you're, so if people you're dog on Hufflepuff, right? Yes. People dog on yeah. Hufflepuff, and a lot of people get sorted into Hufflepuff. And right when they created Pottermore, now it's WizardingWorld.com. A mm. ton of people were complaining because they got sorted into Hufflepuff. And I think there's two factors of this. So one. She must not be named when in defense of Hufflepuff. She said it was her favorite Hogwarts house. I don't know how Mm. truthful she was being. It felt like a Band-Aid when I read the quote. So I didn't feel like... Like trying to save face or something like that? A little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not something she's known for, but here we are. Yeah. Comments aside. So... (laughs) I don't know what I was saying. I think the the personality type of Hufflepuff is not I don't think Hufflepuff has a strong personality to it and that makes it maybe the most unique in terms of you don't get sorted into Hufflepuff necessarily because of your personality traits it might be because of your work ethic or Mm -hmm. your your loyalty like factors that aren't necessarily I would say personality but maybe like your morality and Mm so Maybe it's almost because of the lack of being able to fit in the other houses that you get put in Hufflepuff. Right. Yeah. At least I think that's what I think about for the internet quiz because Ravenclaw is a very specific personality type. I don't yeah. think I love Ravenclaws, but I don't think there are that many of them in the wild. And so I don't know how that makes sense. Like it's an inconsistency in the universe that there would be just as many Gryffindor, Slytherins, Ravenclaws, and Hufflepuffs. There probably would be more Gryffindors and Hufflepuffs than the yeah. rest of the houses because that's how it is in the in the real world. Yeah, I that's an like. that's an interesting way of putting it of looking at specific houses that are more. Mm, I don't want to say that they're easier to get into, but that is more accepting of different kinds of people. I think even just socially in the world yes. of where Ravenclaw, it's almost kind of like 
I don't know. Scared. And maybe the person, the person who comes in and talks about Ravenclaw will feel differently. And that'll be really cool to have that conversation. But of Ravenclaw is kind of like there's a certain standard that you have to meet in order to be in the house more so than Hufflepuff or Gryffindor or, or whatever. Um, that Hufflepuff is that house that, you know, it sounds like, especially the way that it's been written in the books, to where it sounds like Hufflepuff will be a terrible place to go to. But really, it's one of the best places you can go to because it accepts all kinds of people. Man, I wish I could give points to Hufflepuff for what David just said. <laughs> I'll get, hey, I'm yeah. not Professor David. Yeah, <laughs> But that is that is a point if I've ever seen one. And it's a great one. That's a great way of putting it. I love that. I'm just thinking about like our group of friends from school. It's like 70, mm -hmm. maybe 60% Hufflepuff. Maybe yeah. 20 to 30% Gryffindor and then like one or two people from Slytherin and Ravenclaw. Yeah. And, and again, never... like I think with Hogwarts houses, mm -hmm. I think everybody has a little bit of all of them, but it's just like different yeah. percentages of like, I'm more Hufflepuff than I am Gryffindor, but I may have moments. I'm curious more about yeah, that. Mm -hmm. What or, like, house Ravenclaw. is Cody and Abby? See, that's, that's where I'm I think we've talked about this before. I don't I really know. Okay. I think Cody strives and wants to be a Ravenclaw because he has a thirst for knowledge in some places, but I wouldn't have pegged him as a Ravenclaw. But when he took he the, fit the personality. Pottermore test, yeah. it stuck him in Ravenclaw. But I think he oh, answered okay. because that's what he strives to be. I think um, that's another factor of it. I think he's that's fair to put him in Ravenclaw. But Izzy's a Hufflepuff, but also and like, Alicia's I can a Gryffindor with David. So I thought, and I can see yeah, the although, and although Al too. Alicia desires to be in Hufflepuff, so and it's kind of it's, it's kind of one of those things where, where it's like I've never met someone who's been in Hufflepuff who hated being in Hufflepuff. Yeah. You'll see people who are chosen into like Gryffindor or Ravenclaw, and they'll be like, mm. I want to be a, a Hufflepuff. I think there's people that don't want to admit they're in Hufflepuff, though. Yeah, I think there are the people who are kind of like, who have I took the, the test negative. And the yeah. test was you. wrong. Yeah. Yes, there I, are those people. I self sorted myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Let's move on. Uh, there's, and, but yeah, there's lots of personalities to the point of that. And we're going to get into it with characters because they're all so different from each other. Yes. Like Ooh, more than, oh. more yeah, than so Okay, many we're going to get there. We're going to get there. I didn't know if we're going to include this in this episode. We might wait for another episode. Uh, but we did get someone who had a hot take about one of the characters on this list. And I want to know if we were going to address it in this episode. Why not? Let's go for it. There's there's a part at the end where we're going to get okay. to the Let's go bad, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right. So I would love to talk about notable Hufflepuffs. And there's no more. What this is a house episode. So there's no better place to start. Than Professor Sprout. Mm, yeah. As the head of house, both the head of house and the ghost kind of thrive because there's lack of bad things. There's just not really any <laughs> yeah, complaints about true. the head of house. She's fair. She's kind. Every situation we've had with Professor Sprout, she's a little kooky because <laughs> she works with crazy plants all day. But she's so kind and mm -hmm. she knows how to control a room. I don't yeah. know any points for like comparing her versus other heads of houses. It's really hard to compare anyone against McGonagall. Yeah, that's yeah. tough. Or with but Flitwick to some extent, but yes, we love Flitwick. We do on this podcast, but we don't we do. We he doesn't him. have as much appearance as we'd like. I think No, I feel like we and... get in the books. We get more sprout time than really anyone else than any of the other houses. Right. Yeah. So I, I so for sprout, I give 10 points to Hufflepuff for how amazing she is. She's great. And she's great. This is one of the few houses too, where we really don't know. We don't have any other heads of houses to, to note here. Right. Uh, Slytherin has two. And I love Slughorn <laughs> as a head of house. Like, I think he's a really good head of house for Slytherin mm -hmm. because they're all such baddies. And Slughorn's just kind of a, but a good not, guy, Slytherin. Not, See, not, that's not baddies and like... how the world says baddies right i yeah. say again that shows the spectrum within each house you get like an like you get 
a wide spectrum oh, yeah. of what a Slytherin could look like. It could mm-hmm. look like a Draco Malfoy. It could look like a Salazar Slytherin, or it mm-hmm. could look like a Slughorn, or like yeah. a Sierra. You know? Mm, yeah. You and they to, have happy design. birthday, Sierra. But they have core personality traits that tie them all together. Whereas yes. some of these other houses are a little are different. Right. Because yeah. moving on, I mean, these characters we know a lot more about. Newt Scamander and Theseus Scamander. First of all, Newt Scamander. The goat! The goat! <laughs> 30 <laughs> points that's, just that's for Newt. Effect. 30 Ooh. points just for Newt. But comparison, so different. I didn't oh, yeah. believe it when... So Abby put Theseus on here, and I was like, "He is not. There's no way." And I had to look. We it talked up. about he this. is in Hufflepuff. He we've talked about yeah. this. He is in Hufflepuff, and Theseus is definitely more in the Cedric Diggory category, whereas Newt, he's so on the introverted side, mm-hmm. and so so many different factors. And I think it's almost because they don't really fit anywhere else. Mm. Like Newt doesn't oh, have a thirst yeah. for knowledge. His biggest fear is being in an office. Yes, he was the worst at being involved in class because he was always playing with creatures. Creatures, yeah. So yeah, Theseus, I'll give fifteen. I appreciate that. You know, yeah. And Theseus 15. is more of a hard head. He's not curious like Newt is. Mm-hmm. He's completely. He's the more dedicated, he's, hardworking. He's a dedicated type of hard oh, worker yeah. type. Mm-hmm. But when you put Newt in his his work like as a magic zoologist he's a very hardworking individual very hard mm-hmm. yeah and so there's a lot of and he's very trustworthy like both of them are but well, okay for so, sure so yeah. point point question number one um yeah because i've i've it's been a while since i've listened to it and it's been years since we've talked about this where would we put jacob kowalski oh we mm. put him in half a puff that's because what I was, was thinking. Buddies with, because he was buddies yeah. with Newt mostly. Yes. Yeah. But we and didn't also, like. Yeah. We didn't have a hard claim on him necessarily. We thought right. he could be a Gryffindor too, and especially that was pre Secrets of Dumbledore. I might put him in Gryffindor post Secrets of Dumbledore. Yeah. When you asked that question, now I was like, oh, mm-hmm. maybe Gryffindor, and then I was like, wait, we didn't because, say Hufflepuff, didn't we? Because Secrets we, yeah. of Dumbledore did change things. Yeah. So. Yeah. See, I, I thought the other way around. I thought after secrets of dumbledore i thought more of him as a hufflepuff because oh, okay. of his, his loyalty to i think it could new, go either way i think it could go either way because i get it well, bravery and all that kind of stuff and courage but i wasn't sure if i was going to bring this up to me was his loyalty a care there's a huge there's a very well-known harry potter character that has not been sorted in the house and it's mad eye moody and i think there's a oh, strong gosh, case to be made <laughs> oh I think there's a decent case to be made that Mad Eye Moody is a Hufflepuff. I would I love, to hear his that. I would love to hear the case. Tonks was his protege, <laughs> mm-hmm. and mm. when you when you he fits right in with the Theseus commanders and all of that. Crazy loyal to Dumbledore and and the cause of good. Emphasis mm-hmm. on. I think it's. Oh yes. <laughs> so I don't know. He doesn't give like a showboaty type of thing, no. Like Dumbledore would, because Dumbledore gives the Griffin. He's like very powerful and stuff, but he does everything with a flair because he's a Gryffindor and wants to show off a little bit. Mad Eye mm-hmm. Moody doesn't show off. He doesn't care what he looks like. He's grumpy. He's not a Slytherin. There's no way. And I don't. I he doesn't that, give me no. Ravenclaw vibes. So that's why I would say he's probably a very high achieving Hufflepuff. Yeah, I, I, so I think that Mad Eye has probably, he's probably the perfect case of showing and displaying all of the different house characteristics at different moments. Yeah. Um, Cause sometimes he, you know, he, he can be like a, a Slytherin in, he's very um, cunning. Yeah. very yeah very cunning he he also is very intelligent in terms of um catching bad guy wizards or, or or whatever he's shown to be extremely brave like a gryffindor but he's extremely loyal and so unvain i don't know what the other word is to say other than un but he literally like you said he doesn't care about his appearance he doesn't care about anybody else's background really that much um and he's going to do whatever he can to protect those that he c- 
cares about or has loyalty to. So I think for me, that's a hard one because I think at, at different cases, he displays all of the house's characteristics, I think, but more I times than not. I don't think any not, of his history speaks towards Slytherin. Right. Slytherin is probably someone, the one I don't think I don't think, think he could come out of Slytherin. So that let, but that does lead me towards Gryffindor more because he has those qualities and there's such a, we'll have to talk about that in later episodes, but there is right. A, absolutely. There is a, it's not a fine line between Gryffindor and Slytherin as we've mm-hmm. learned from Harry's experience. Yeah. So anyway, we'll talk about real Hufflepuffs though. And we mentioned her once, but Nymphadora Tonks is another mm-hmm. one that gets, she's great. And 10 points for her. She doesn't, it's not noted much that she is in Hufflepuff, but we do know that she is. And mm-hmm. she's a great character. Fantastic. Right. And it's another case of like, you don't have to be in the same house to like get together because her and Lupin work great together. Mm-hmm. Right. Did you guys see the video I sent you about them behind the scenes talking oh, about yeah. having all the dogs? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because you're having dog conscious. babies. <laughs> I know. <laughs> They're oh, so, funny. so weird. So it weird. Was, it was weird, but really funny. Oh, I really liked it. All right, Tonks was... got, you know, Tonks got a lot more time in the books, and I think that's sad. But I think it was great casting. Mm. Well, uh, we a lot of time say, in the Half Blood Prince. We could say the same thing about Lupin didn't yeah. have enough time in the movies, but he got more. But he did get more, but especially with Tonks, there could have been even more. I also didn't Deathly realize until reading some more again that. When she died, she was our age. Mm. You, Abby, you just made me feel like how old I am, though. Because mm. you're like, yeah. she was our age. I'm like, she wasn't 21. Oh, mm. wait. <laughs> yeah, you, you brought I up our... I'm like 22 Abby. in my head all the time. I'm know. still Listen, 21. Or listeners or 22. viewers, this is happening for the first time ever on this show. Abby, you just... You just offended me a little bit. So I'm going to take five <laughs> points away from, from Hufflepuff on that Oh, one. no. Professor David, though. No. You want to make it 15? I'm scared. <laughs> also, you guys right. have my brain like turning a lot. I've been thinking about what house I short Cody <laughs> into, and I think I've decided I sort of into Hufflepuff. Ooh. Final answer. He seems... Okay, yeah. I, I think so, too. I think that's where Cody belongs. Another because person we should mention he's extremely He's extremely loyal. Here. Yeah. Cole Harris. Yes. Common cool. guest of the yep. pod. We Happy just birthday, didn't want, we couldn't overload. Happy birthday, Cole. We couldn't overload this episode with too many Hufflepuffs. But he is a, he yeah. is maybe the most proud of his house. Oh yeah, absolutely. That I know I'd of Hufflepuff. I mm-hmm. love it. Okay, we gotta talk about Cedric Diggory. <laughs> and he has some pros and cons, you know. He mm-hmm. he's a great character, he's loyal, he's kind in half a uh, prisoner of Azkaban, as we talked mm-hmm. about. Uh Last season, he's really great in that. He kind of turns around the Quidditch team and he still almost forfeits the game because of Harry's injury. Mm -hmm. Just a great guy in general. And it's very sad that he died. And I think Hufflepuff was a little mean to Harry in support of Cedric. But he also was like their champion. Like he's kind of the ultimate Hufflepuff. At least of the 90s. I'm sorry. Time out. Time out. Before Ooh. we start into all the Cedric things, I feel like we didn't give Tonks enough time. I want to say something really fast. <laughs> Here we go. That's fair enough. Yeah. He was my, she was my favorite yeah. character for a long go time. Go off. Go off. I just wanted to say one more thing. One, I think she's another great example of a Hufflepuff in that she gave Ramus another sense of belonging and a place with her when he felt like he was going to mm. feel alone yeah. and worried about having a family. But she helped him through that mm-hmm. before they both died. Additional five points to Hufflepuff. Thank yes. Okay. That balances out Harry. Abby's age comment. So it's good. Yep. So Cedric Diggory, this changes it a little bit because of Cursed Child. Because Cedric Diggory becomes a dark <sighs> okay. wizard in an alternate reality. We have to talk about yeah. that. Yeah uh one if you're new to the podcast um go back and listen to our episodes to where we reviewed the cursed child because one month on the cursed child because one we've read it i have seen it on broadway so we we value it as part of the canon we do uh, and if that turns you off to 
what we do, get over it because we've read it, we've experienced it, we enjoy it, we think it's great. But where it does have flaws and problems, I think is one of them. Well, one of them obviously is with Ron and how his character is written. But Amen. two, it's it's also about what they did with Cedric. Because in The Cursed Child, he does become a Death Eater after being embarrassed in Task 2 by Albus and Scorpius. Scorpius. So what do we do with that? I have a few thoughts. One, just in general, I think it's an extreme jump to just jump from embarrassment to I'm going to become a Death Eater now. Yeah. I just feel like that's really big. And I don't, I don't think that, that fits with the character very much. But Wormtail didn't take much. Whatever. Well. That well, yeah. But I also I go back to there's a spectrum of people within each house, and while Cedric embodied Hufflepuff values, he's also described in the books as noble. Harry was like, "Quit being noble, Cedric." I think there's yeah. a sense of pride. With that type of noble noblism, no, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I don't want to say nobility because that's not what I mean. <laughs> um, but I think that when pushed too far, um, you know, there's that it can turn dark. Mm-hmm. Um, when pushed too far with a lot of those values in any house, you know, you can be pushed to to dark things. My my plus prideful. point here is that it took a lot to make Cedric fail. Yeah. They had to try on two separate occasions to mess him up, and he just defied odds. Like, I don't remember what they did the first time, but they really tried to mess up Cedric, and he still won the task. <laughs> and I th- and mm-hmm. so it, it, it's, it does speak to the fact that he's just such a, a great wizard and a high achieving and hardworking person. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's an alternate reality. So I'm kind of going to throw that out there too. Yeah. And I, I kind of, I really like what Abby said about it took, it took a couple of things to get Cedric to that point, because I do know after the first task, he was embarrassed. Um, The second task, he was embarrassed. And remember Think about how much time was in between the first and second task. So think about how long people were probably Nuts. teasing him, making fun of him. You never know. Maybe Hufflepuff. Mm, I don't know if I want to say this, but I, I guess I'll try. Maybe some Hufflepuffs started cheering for Harry no. or were turning their backs on Cedric or whatever. Either way, that's months of ridicule for, for a while. And who knows what happened in task three and what what that would have looked like or, or whatever. So there's just several different things that go on with all of this um, of how he even gets to that point. But yes, even alternate reality, we, we still have to deal with, yes, Cedric was the champion for Hufflepuff. But still, what they did to Harry is inexcusable, considering what they did to him at Chamber of Secrets or during the Chamber of Secrets. Like, they don't have a really good history with Harry Potter. And I think that's just bad writing because Ravenclaw is just completely out of most of that. They're mostly out of everything. <laughs> yes. We're going to be honest. They they do not yes. get a lot of time. No. And so, and to, I still feel like Cedric kind of got robbed by Harry. Not even all the Gryffindors supported Harry the whole time. Mm, yeah. At the beginning, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Ron didn't. <laughs> Ron, Ron definitely, Ron definitely didn't. So and yeah, so I think I, not, it's mean. Yes, 
It is funny that the Slytherin supported Cedric, though. That does give me a laugh. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. They hate Harry because Harry's been the yep. has been the bane of their existence since he showed up year one. So, all right, last character on our list, and it's one of my favorite characters, the Fat Friar. Mm-hmm. He's fun because of also because of the lack of bad things. But this is some fun mm-hmm. things about his history because I just don't know when we do a character study over the fat friar. <laughs> probably never. I'm gonna be <laughs> probably honest. Never. Probably never. This is the exactly. Most we're gonna get. So this is it right here. Uh, the fat friar was born no earlier than 982, which means that he was sorted into Hufflepuff house and he was taught by Helga Hufflepuff himself. At some point in his life, he joined the clergy as part of the mendicant religious order, meaning that he spent his life begging in the name of charity. Noble life for a noble man. Noble. Mm. There it is again. Mm -hmm. Apparently, given his physically large appearance, he indulged in the pleasures of food and drink. The fat friar's kindness was to be his undoing. He was executed because senior churchmen grew suspicious of his ability to cure the pox merely by poking peasants with a stick and his ill-advised habit of pulling rabbits out of the communion cup. Yikes. The friar returned from the dead as a ghost and returned to Hogwarts Castle where he became the house ghost of his former house, Hufflepuff. He has thus spent the far, far spent the majority of his afterlife within the castle walls along with the other Hogwarts ghosts. After his death, the fat friar retained his kind and joyful demeanor. He eagerly welcomed new students to the school and offered assistance whenever needed. So does that make the fat friar probably one of the oldest ghosts? Yes. Hmm, 10 points. Also, how do you get chosen as a house ghost? I think he just took the spot and application it taken interview from process i don't think checks. so i think if you're a ghost and you show up i bet afterwards they're like no we already have a ghost <laughs> okay i found this okay i found this article on the the nicholsworth.com and it mentions something about the fat fryer the hufflepuff house clearly has the best ghost surely everyone has experienced a haunting and sometimes those experiences suck i have not but here i am if you're going to be haunted, let's hope it's not by ghosts like nearly headless Nick, who is whiny, or bloody Baron from Slytherin. Clearly, the fat friar from Hufflepuff is the ghost you want. He's cheerful and a bit mysterious and doesn't care all that much about school. Thinking Maybe about changing houses Peeves. yet? I feel like Peeves would be the worst to visit. He's not a ghost, though. Well, he's a poltergeist. Fair. And he's not in the house. I'm I'm offended by this whole they did attack nearly, nearly headless, headless Nick. Nick slander. That's fair. The heck is that? Who He's is this just guy? The mo- you know, it's I a gal, names. but it's okay. I, I want her name. <laughs> I don't know that I call him whiny. Now, did he complain a lot about the Listen, headless hunt? He wanted to be What's part of the headless Alexia hunt. Castella. But he was disappointed. You know? Yeah, who wouldn't be? So... I would argue that he's not whiny. Nearly Headless Nick is dramatic. <laughs> As we all are at some points of our lives. Come on. He's always are, dramatic. Ain't we all? Ain't we all? He earned it. He earned it, yes. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Hmm. Sabrina. It is true. So I think he compares well to the other ghosts. Nearly Headless Nick is kind of iconic. It's iconic. See, it, you know... And we don't get a lot of time with the Fat Friar. I understand nope. what his whole... He also is the only ghost that doesn't play an important role in the story at some point or another. Yeah. So how is he the best house ghost? Because he doesn't make waves. We love waves. It's how we float. <laughs> He's how we just get the somewhere. friendliest. He's, He's so friendliest. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'm not giving him the best for being nice. I didn't I know we were know arguing about him being the best. I just I don't know if we're arguing good. about it. We're just comparing and contrasting a little bit. I think I he's hate great. this article. Like, what's Sabrina, nice about terrible it? job. <laughs> but he's just yeah. He doesn't. I mean, he doesn't have like a serious bad history either. He doesn't have a bad ghost bone in his body. Yes, in his corporal. In his corporal body. body. Yeah, that's right. Uh. 
just quick note about the common room. Ugh. It's a great common room. So much the natural plants, light. The it's lighting. The plants. Next to the kitchens. Like, mm. Also, I think if you're, I think part of the Wizarding World slash Pottermore test should say, are you a plant person? Yes. Hufflepuff. <laughs> <laughs> just mostly automatic. Yeah. Because... It's just so cozy and roomy and you just feel so comfortable. And like, it... yep. yes. Like, it's what I imagine, like, the Shire kind of feels like, you know? Mm, it is mm, very that's a really like good a comparison. Hobbit hole. Very good. Five and points just, to Hufflepuff. So nice. Great comparison. And the badger kind of fits with the vibes, too, of, like, the earth yes. and the tunneling and stuff like Five that. Five more points for Hufflepuff, yes. And what I read about badgers is that while they seem cute and cuddly, like a non-stinky skunk, they're super ferocious hunters. They can be. And yes. so if you get on their bad side... Mm. well here ferocious. it is fun fact fun they fact for you guys um i used to read a series then if you're one of these fans please comment but there probably isn't many of you when i was in middle school i used to read these series called warrior cats okay <laughs> how did i know you're gonna say warrior <laughs> i knew cats. he was going for warrior I cats i never it. read them but he felt like them. a warrior cats kid i was I, okay here's I how read, weird i was i've here's read how, i've read one or two i think i've read listen i once I, for a birthday present, got the entire second volume of books. So six books um, of like, you know, so obviously you have the, one, the first one with Firestar and then you have the second one with Bramble Claw. But anyway, <laughs> before I get way into this, um, are we going to start one a of Warriors the... Cat podcast? No, we're not. I mean, I mean I'm down. I, I mean, I don't have them anymore, so I'm going to have to buy them all over again. And Alicia would hate that. Um, I already buy claw. all the Star Wars books ever. Um, oh, but, Warriors Cat podcast. But one of the most ferocious animals going up against the clans were badgers. They were. Um, I didn't read that book, but I believe there's, you. There were several different. There, I mean, there. Were, I think there was like one of the warriors. They had to become an elder because a badger like bit off its tail. And then there's mm -hmm. been several several warriors that were killed by badgers. Um, so like, yeah, they're vicious for sure. They're not to be pushed over. And you can say the same thing about Hufflepuff. Fun fact for you, not Warriors Cat related. Do you know what the you. first yep. choice for the mascot for the Hufflepuff was going to be? Abby? Oh, Hufflepuff. I learned, but I don't remember anymore. It was going to be a bear. Mm -hmm. But I the like... badger fits far better. Speaking of bears, there was like a spinoff series from the Warrior Cats books called Seeker. This is gonna be We're the theme the of this lore. season. Is David getting into trying to bring the hey, conversation? David, I want back you to, to workshop cats. some titles um, for mm. your for your Warrior Cats podcast. Just for fun, <laughs> no, please don't. Please don't. I'm, gonna, don't. I'm not I'm gonna. gonna this a possibility. No, I'm not gonna participate in this. But what I am gonna do is gonna. <laughs> I want to see if there is a Warriors Cat podcast already. Because <laughs> mm. one is enough. What? Yeah. <laughs> For sure. And uh, trust me, they I need just want to know if it. it exists. If listeners, if it doesn't exist, maybe David and I will do one episode to say that it. Oh exists. my gosh. Can we do it on Fandom Done Right just to see? <laughs> That'd be no. great. Okay, maybe. I'll think about it. <laughs> Make it this year's Christmas special. I was kidding. Uh, so we're going to move into miscellaneous, which is one thing. They produce the few fewest dark wizards of any house. Mm. Uh, Abby, would you like to read some of our house achievements slash yeah. character achievements? Yeah. I didn't contribute to this section, but I read it over and went, hmm, that looks good. So <laughs> <laughs> it was mostly me 10 minutes before podcast going, Cedric won the Traders of the Tournament. Sure. So uh, house mm. achievements. Yeah. Cedric won the Triwizard Tournament, Oops. technically. Yikes. He tied. Uh, Hufflepuff won the House Cup technically once in Harry's tenure. Sadly, Harry's fourth year the same year Cedric died, which, you know. It kind of adds up because yeah. there was a, well, there's no Quidditch in the mix. Uh -huh. So Hufflepuffs yeah. got probably got more points because they didn't win the Quidditch. They never win the Quidditch Cup, but there was no Quidditch Cup. Right. Yeah. So please continue. 
And at least six out of 31 or more members of Dumbledore's army were Hufflepuff. They were mostly Gryffindors okay. and about five or so Ravenclaws, but there's also a handful of unknown houses. But mm. I mean, that's it's something. to be expected that there would be more Gryffindors because the Gryffindors kind of started mm -hmm. it. And, and some good Hufflepuff characters that we oh, yeah. didn't like in Chamber of Secrets. Ernie McMillan, Justin Finch Fletchley. Honestly, his okay. name's He's even the worst. Okay. <laughs> Hannah Abbott. Hannah Abbott, who marries yeah. Neville Longbottom. Yes, mm -hmm. I didn't put that on here because that's not, <laughs> that's kind of a weird thing to say. House achievement. achievement. But, yeah, yeah, but it's a cool, notable fact. There you go. Um, Hufflepuff was the only other house besides Gryffindor to unanimously stay for the Battle of Hogwarts. As so, far as I can tell. So that's right. important to mention. Slytherin stayed in the dungeons. Boomer. The mm -hmm. dungeons were due. <clears throat> <laughs> you know, Newt saved New York from Grindelwald and Credence mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, by himself. Newt was part of saving Paris from Grindelwald. <laughs> hey, and, uh, listen. Wait. Part. Was, do we know which house Nicholas Flamel was a part of? He's so old. I don't even know. Maybe he was there before even houses were... Maybe. No, well, he was no, 600, 600 something. 666 so. years yeah, old, no. yeah. You don't look a day over 465. <laughs> I don't know what he... I don't remember what Jacob Kowalski says, but it's a good line. Jacob, so yeah, good. you're gonna have to look at what he doesn't know. He doesn't pop up under notable Hufflepuffs, which I feel like he would, so he's probably in Gryffindor's Ravenclaw yeah, or something. That's what I'd imagine. You know, Ravenclaw would be my guess. Sorry, please continue. Uh, and lastly, in this section, Newt helped Grindelwald not get re elected and played a major role in leading Dumbledore's team in Secrets of Dumbledore. Well, not re elected, elected that's a typo, but. <laughs> So this part's to point out that Abs and Spencer aren't biased. Ernie McMillan mm. and the House collectively were horrible for parts of Chamber of Secrets, but most of them apologized afterward when they were wrong. I'm I'm very I'm very much David's. with Ron's reaction in that. Yeah. Oh, also, Kino Nicholas Fomel actually did not go to Hogwarts. He went to Bo Baxons. That's that's right. Mm -hmm. I knew that. Friend. I forgot. Yes. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Makes uh, sense. So, David, I knew you were going to bring that up, so I brought it up. Thank Just you. Just some hum Hufflepuff humility for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Zachariah Smith was a jerk, and he did not redeem himself. He Ever. He deserted Dumbledore's army, and he did. He also was the only Hufflepuff, so technically not unanimous, because he did not participate in the Battle of Hogwarts. Yeah, so... He left with the little kids. Yeah, so for him, minus five points to Hufflepuff for him. Easy. Yeah. At least. I'm being generous. I would take there. away more. Yeah, that's being generous to us. All right, let's do 10. <laughs> uh, Abby, you had the next one. I mean, I just added this in at the end. I felt like Justin Finch Fletchley wasn't great either. I mean, well, he, he did, he did apologize. He, he came back around. He but... Dumbledore's mm -hmm. army. He was in the Battle of Hogwarts. Well, that and also, or something. also yeah. I'm going to give him, I'm going to give him a little bit of Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I, don't I guess there is that. some to be fair. So he obviously it's scary when you thought was... a snake was... If, right, if Harry thought that... Or he thought Harry was sending he was a snake. 12. Over, you know. but, but, but then at the same time, when has Harry, Harry ever... Harry? When has Harry ever shown... Violent that, tendencies. Yeah, that kind of okay, tendency. But also it was the beginning done. of year two. How well did he know Harry at that time? Harry's a god. Well, His parents maybe, used to tell stories about the boy who lived. Maybe for Justin, that loyalty had to be built up. That trust had to be built up. I don't know. I don't give him a pass. But he, he redeemed himself. That's more yeah. than I can say for Michael. Zachary Smith. Whatever. Who cares? You're, Michael Corners in Ravenclaw. I will not claim him. <laughs> I will not claim him. <laughs> I will not claim him. I will bring That's him up fair. when we do the Ravenclaw episode. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Because I think he was he he was a jerk to Ginny, right? Yeah. Yeah, he was. 
He went out with Ginny. So minus 50 points from Ravenclaw when we get to the episode. <laughs> write that down. I'm right Already down. starting at negative 50. Yeah, they're going to work 50. their way back. <clears throat> <laughs> we don't even know. Lastly, we Ravenclaw, already so, yeah. addressed this, but the Hufflepuff bullying in Goblet of Fire. We did address you know, it. Yeah. Honestly, we never said they were perfect. Each house is going to stray from their values at times. Again, it's a spectrum. Well, again, it's kind of what Spencer was saying, and I'll give him a little bit of a pass on. I give them more of a pass on what happened in Goblet of Fire than I do Chamber of Secrets. Um, yeah. Because like Spencer said, they were loyal to Cedric. And even in their eyes, Harry, because Harry does everything and he's awesome and he won the Quidditch Cup last uh, last year, you know, the one finally the one thing that Hufflepuff gets to be on top for, Harry comes in and is part of it. So it's understandable from yeah. from their perspective. Yeah. But that's about that's about all we had. Yeah. It's good stuff. Uh wait, so like I so as Dumbledore would do, I'll give some last minute points. Uh, to Hufflepuff, so I didn't give I didn't give a a, a point to Cedric, so I'm going to go ahead and give him 15 points. Um, obviously, not as an amazing of a character as Newt, because Newt is the goat, as we've yeah, already established in this goat. episode. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'll give him I'll give him 15 points for that one. In terms of the house achievements, that's going to total up to 75 points to mm. hufflepuff that uh, math really achievements, adds up. achievements mean a lot um and so we'll, we'll leave it at that and then like i said you know 10 points from zachariah smith um ernie mcmillan i'm going to take 10 points off of him because because nope. i don't like him and i don't care how, what he's, apology he said he's better than justin for sure he is fiercely, boisterously loyal for the rest of the series. I don't know. I, I guess, well, again, we're in the middle of our read through. So maybe I'll feel differently about that once I read more. But I like Justin yeah. better as of right now. I don't remember anything from Justin post Chamber of Secrets, but Ernie yeah. is. I don't remember in, anything about Ernie. I remember Ernie being more involved in Order of the Phoenix, he like might joining be. Dumbledore's Armory. He's kind of the first. He kind of brings all the Hufflepuffs with him to the first meeting. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. But right now, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not too crazy about Ernie. I am kind of crazy about Justin. Hi, Isabel. It's good to see you. Um, she can't. Say that. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> she forgot. But that was really funny though for whoever was watching. <laughs> yeah, but in terms of presentation, another fifty points. Uh, Twenty-five to each of you for a great job. And. Thank you. Starting kicking off, you know, setting the tone for this house cup that we're having this season. So well, thanks, Professor David. Appreciate it. What were you what was your subject, by the way? Uh Warrior Cat. Swagger. Charisma. Swagger. Charms. So get yeah, charms. It was very nice. (laughs) So uh thank you for listening thank you for watching if you're watching yeah. and we'll be we'll be back next time what's next on the harry potter podcast just before hogwarts legacy comes our way for, for mm. david and i not abby sorry sorry abby we're gonna talk about we're gonna take a little trip to the past and some of the more recent past to talk about <laughs> harry potter in video games and mobile games yes yeah hogwarts Digital. mystery y'all Digital Harry Potter games. That's not what it's going to be called, but that is what we will be talking about next Mm. time on the podcast. So until next time, Hufflepuff managed. Mm. (laughs) It's interesting. We don't have a slogan, so that's what it is.